Hey, what's up everybody? And today I'm gonna teach you how I set up a brand new camera. And today's brand new camera is the Canon R6. This is Canon's newest mirrorless camera. The R5 is just a tiny bit older. Uh, the R5 is the one I bought. This is a demo unit from Canon's Professional Services, which I'm a member of. And uh, basically I got this camera to test it out compared to the R5. But also having this be a 20 megapixel camera, it's a lot more conducive to like photojournalism students and photojournalists in general, which I know a lot of. And they all kind of asked about the R5. And so I thought I'd try this out and see what people think. But before I can test it, I gotta set up the camera. So today I'm gonna walk you through the settings on this camera, how to set up your camera, what I'm thinking as I set up a camera, and then we'll just kind of chat about that as I go along. Um, Thanks for following as always, and go follow me on Instagram if you haven't. I'm gonna be posting a lot about these cameras over there, and I've been asking questions and answering questions already that people wanna know, so uh, let's get into it. So this camera's brand new. The only thing I've set is the date and time. I haven't done anything with it. I haven't even taken a picture with it. So uh, first we're gonna start in this first menu. I'm gonna switch to RAW, and I'm gonna turn off JPEG. Um, if you want, you can do a compressed RAW, which is just gonna save you file space, basically. Um, I guess technically you'll lose some data. A lot of people say they don't notice a difference. Um, I just use the full raw because I, I want all that data because down the road I'll maybe want to do something different with this file and I want all that data. On the JPEG front, it's regular JPEG files. Uh, the S, M, and L depict how many megapixels the file is. And then the little jagged versus smooth is basically the compression. So the jagged ones are going to be more compressed and the smooth L here will be like a less compressed version. Uh, cropping aspect ratio, I'm not going to change right now. I might talk about it later, but what's kind of cool is you can set this to a button on the R5, and I assume on this camera as well. And it's kind of nice if you're shooting like birds or sports or something that's really far away. You can kind of crop in and save some space right in the camera. Menu 2, I don't really change much. Um, you could change your ISO speed ratings and range for the auto. Um, I, it's just, I kind of just leave it to like set it to the maximum and just kind of go from there. I generally set my shutter speed or ISO and stuff uh, manually, so it doesn't really matter. Um, since I'm not using JPEG, a lot of these don't really apply. These are kind of all like the auto lighting optimizer and stuff. These are all kind of uh, JPEG settings um, more than they are like apply to the raw file. White balance, uh, you can set it to whatever in the menu, but I'm gonna change this obviously depending on where I'm shooting. Um, a lot of people leave it in auto if they're shooting raw and fix it later, but I'll generally set it appropriately. Uh, custom white balance, you use this when you're shooting a gray card, um, and I use this a lot. And this is basically that like you can take a picture of a photographic gray card. Um, I use a Y bail card, uh, W H I B A L. And then you can program in a white balance that's perfect right in here. Again, this kind of matters more for JPEGs because if you're shooting raw, you shoot the picture and then I just set it in Lightroom. Uh, color space, uh, you can go either way on this. Some of my clients like sRGB and some like Adobe RGB. Again, I'm shooting raw, so I set this when I export from Lightroom. Um, I guess I'd probably set it to Adobe just when I do do the JPEGs, but um, a lot of my clients actually prefer sRGB. Picture style, again, this only applies to your JPEGs. I kind of leave it in standard. Um, some people like to like see maybe a little bit flatter. I like to see it with some contrast. Uh, clarity, again, is only gonna apply to JPEGs. Uh, long, I'm not gonna touch much in here either. Again, these are all JPEG settings. Um, Multi-exposure, again, this would be case by case. Sometimes I'll use this. I think I've used it like twice in my whole career, but some people use it a lot. Uh, HDR mode and focus bracketing are things, I, again, I'm going to use case by case. Focus bracketing is kind of cool because you can take these cameras and they can like basically stack pictures so you can get a deeper depth of field. This is generally for like still life photography um, when you're trying to get like an entire bottle or maybe a plate of food or something. You, you can do that with this camera uh, and I guess you put them back together in the computer. Uh, interval timer, this is for making time lapses. Um, I, I'm, again, going to use this, uh, you know, on a case by case. But if you were to enable it, um, you could then uh, hit the info button here on the back and you could set, this is interval is going to be the amount of time between pictures and number of shots is going to be the number of pictures taken. You can generally do math on like how 
it will, there's like interval timer calculators online and you can kind of figure out like, okay, if I do a hundred pictures at 10 seconds a piece, how long is my end clip going to be? So, uh, shutter mode, I am going to change this to mechanical by default. It's an electric first curtain. I don't really know why. Um, the R5 is the same way, but I'm going to change it to mechanical. Um, so basically electronic is fully electronic, meaning that it is using, uh, just the sensor refresh rate to take the picture to make the, uh, exposure. Uh, electronic first curtain means I guess it sets the first half of it with the electric and then it chases with a mechanical shutter. Uh, allegedly this doesn't have um, motion blur like the, the rolling shutter issue the electronic might have. Um, but it sounds the exact same as the mechanical so I just use mechanical. Uh, release shutter with our out card. I turn this off because I don't want to be taking pictures and thinking that I have a card in there when I don't. Um, a lot of rental places and things will leave this on so they can test their cameras, but I always turn that off on every camera. Um, IS image stabilizer mode. I've, you know, I've done, I've changed a bunch of things on this. Right now I got no lens mounted, so it doesn't know what's going on. Um, I've been turning it off in general on these cameras, unless I'm doing stuff at night, then I'll go turn it on. Um, video. Uh, this isn't a video features video. Sorry in advance. Don't dislike the video because of that this is a photographer thing uh, But this would be for the video features when you're recording video um, But ag again, I've been leaving the IS off generally until I need it So if I'm shooting at night or really slow shutter speed, then I go turn it on Image review I turn this off and what this is is basically the camera um, immediately showing you the picture you just took and that drives me insane i i want to go i'll go review the pictures but i don't want to do it as i'm shooting that's really annoying uh viewfinder resume review I, I turn it off i'm gonna look at the screen but on these cameras since they have electric viewfinder you could um look at it through the eyepiece which would be good on a sunny day or something like that um metering timer i don't really touch exposure simulation I've been doing enable and so basically what this means is it's the what you see through the electronic viewfinder is going to be as close as it can get to the exposure you're you know what the camera's going to output basically um, so I've been leaving this on enable um, I don't see a reason why not to so this you can change a ton of things that you see through the viewfinder this would be very much based on your preference um, so basically you get all these different collections of screens sometimes i turn some of these off um and, and i i just kind of leave it because i end up just getting into one of them and you know just leaving it uh grid display sometimes i turn these on sometimes i turn them off i've been having them off lately but i used to always have them on um histogram display i'm gonna do brightness i didn't know you could change this to small Oh, that's much better. Okay, I would definitely change this. Histogram display, display size small. The large is gigantic on the R5, and that's really annoying. So I'm glad you can change that to small. Um, focus distance display, yeah, I like that. Um, I'm gonna change it to feet, because I'm an American, and that's what we measure in in the real world. I'm kidding, everyone. Um, but that's the system I use, so that's what I'm gonna use. Um, but display settings, I'm gonna use that in manual focus mode. You can do it when focusing and stuff. Um, should be kind of nice if you were trying to like measure stuff or something, which an old professor used to teach us to do. Uh, viewfinder display format. I honestly don't know what the difference is. I guess maybe display one is slightly cropped. Um, I've been using display one on the R5 and I use display one on the R, I believe when I had it. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you a big difference in the two of these. Uh, display performance. I've been using smooth on the R5. I don't, no, if I really noticed that much of a difference, I used power saving at first. I didn't really notice the difference, but I turned on smooth when I started shooting sports with the R5. Um, movie record quality. This I'm not going to touch in this this video, but yeah, you can go in and change to whatever uh, format you want it and stuff. Um, yeah, I would change sound recording to manual. Would be the least I would say, and uh, there's a couple other things I would probably change. All right, I had to put a lens on the camera here so we could get into this menu. Uh, AF operation, I'm going to switch this to servo. Um, basically, the difference being one shot is when you focus the camera, it stops. Servo, as long as you tell it to focus or continue to hold down the button, it'll keep trying to focus. I'm going to use servo. I have a whole video on the R5 autofocus settings, which I imagine will be mirrored on the R6. But yeah, servo is the way to go. 
Uh, AF method, I'm actually gonna change it to one point or expand AF area. And I will describe in a little bit later, again, the R5 video has a thorough um, setup video on that. Subject detect, I'm gonna do people. Obviously, if you're shooting animals, change it to animals, but I, I'm gonna use people. Um, uh, eye detection, you're gonna have to switch to this. And you gotta switch to the AFI mode to turn it on. But anyways, back to one point AF. Continuous AF, I'm gonna turn off. What that means is the camera will just focus all the time. Uh, and that's super annoying. If you're doing video or something, that's gonna be maybe different. Or if you're like trying to take a selfie or something, uh, that's gonna be a lot different too. Uh, touch and drag AF is basically the ability to use the back screen to move the autofocus point around. Uh, with the R5, I haven't been using that. Um, so I'm gonna leave it off on this one too, but it is really cool. I loved it on the EOS R. Um, I've just been using a different setup on the R5. So I'm gonna turn the peaking on for manual focus. I use this with like vintage lenses and stuff and it just makes life a little easier to get things in focus. I can't remember if I use high or low, uh, to be honest, I think I use high. Um, focus guide, I'm also gonna turn on um, and that's just basically gonna tell you if things are in or out of focus. It's gonna use the camera's autofocus system to tell you. Um, AF assist beam fire, I don't think, this would only be with an external speed light because I don't think there's an AF beam on this. So I guess I'll leave it on because I don't generally use flashes on the camera. Um, but yeah, you might want to change that if you're using external flashes. Um, servo AF, I'm gonna basically switch between um, one, I'm gonna switch between all of these generally, but generally one and four are the ones I use on all my Canon cameras. Um, sports, I'm gonna use four. Uh, I'm, a lot of the time I'm on one, and then um, I've been using two a bit lately with sports because you're kind of like, this face tracking so good and then I wanna just avoid other people. Um, once you go in, you can hit the rate button. Uh, you can change like how locked on and stuff that is. If you're doing more portraits and like slower moving things, definitely wanna cheat whatever setting you have over to the locked on side of things. Um, so yeah, you, you just wanna like be over here. Maybe if you're doing slower moving things, maybe a little more responsive if you're shooting things that are dancing around or sports and you know, quick movement stuff you want to be to the right. Uh, XL, DXL tracking, that's going to be uh, just kind of, again, the speed at which it kind of starts to pull forward or back. Um, so, yeah. Uh, lens, electronic manual focus. What? Uh, there's some settings you can, like never touch. Um, yeah, I'm going to just skip that. Uh, one shot AF release priority. I definitely want that cheated to focus. So when I do use one shot, it's 100% in focus. Um, switching track subjects. Uh, I'm actually going to disable this to be sure. So this is basically when you are using uh, face tracking, it's going to tell you how quickly you switch between people. And I'm not, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to find the person I want and I'm going to keep it on there. Um, lens drive when autofocus possible. Basically, I'm going to leave that on. You can limit the autofocus modes um, to like kind of turn off ones you don't use. I generally just set it and forget it, so I probably just leave it alone. Um, and I do kind of hop between a bunch of them. I'd probably turn off these ones to the right if I turned off anything. So AF method selection control is basically how you switch between these modes. Um, so by default, it's you hit this grid, this little button on the back of the camera, that, that, that left icon and then the MFN button, which is the tiny button by the shutter, and you just cycle through them, or you can do it where it switches the main dial. I generally use the MFN, uh, but main dial might make more sense. I'll probably try that out on a camera and try to get used to it. Um, orientation, uh, basically this is, if you turn the camera left or right, your autofocus point will switch to a different point. So if you're, you know, uh, turn the camera vertical, then maybe you want your box higher on people's heads versus in the middle or something like that. Um, I've tried both over the years. Um, I, I definitely prefer just having it be the same. It's quicker to move it than it is to turn the camera and have it jump around. Um, but if you're shooting like a ton of headshots or portraits or whatever, and you know, like I turn it sideways, probably makes more sense to use different. 
Uh, initial servo autofocus point for face tracking. This is something I'm learning about and changing a lot. So far I've been using auto. And basically what this is, is it tells the camera, like, do you want to set the box in the center and have it look for faces there? Or do you want me to just find the faces automatically? Um, I've been using this auto so far based on my setup, but if you are kind of finding the faces quicker, um, then you can switch to one of these others. So basically auto is gonna find the face automatically on its own. AF point set is gonna be like whatever you're using for the boxes. When you switch to face tracking, it's gonna start where the box was set. And then the last one, the top one rather, would be I'm gonna set a point for face tracking. Um, again, so far I've been using auto, it works great. Um, and I could see switching to this middle one uh, I just need to test them more, but uh, one of these two bottom ones would make the most sense for me. Uh, focus ring rotation, you can change this. So on these new lenses and stuff, you can, on the RF, this is an RF lens, you can change the way the focus direction works. So if you're a Nikon or other wrong camera system person, you can switch it. Otherwise you leave it normal, the right way, the way Canon meant it to be. Um, you can also change the manual focus sensitivity. Um, so it varies, as, you know, that's cool. <laughs> uh, sensitivity, AF point select. Uh, this is basically the speed at which you can move the autofocus point around. Uh, I'm gonna try it plus one. I always want that to be faster. Uh, so we got, this is the playback menu. You're not gonna change a lot of settings in here. Um, so these are more like per photo, I think. Uh, I'm going to skip over most of this. Raw image processing would be to, if you had a raw file on your card and you wanted to switch it over to a JPEG file, you could do that. Um, or resize, crop it, whatever. I'm, I'm not going to do any of these things on a phone unless an extreme situation comes up. The big thing I change in here though is image jump. I change this on all my Canon cameras over to display protected images only. So what this is gonna do, and I hopped out to explain this, is basically when you look at photos on the camera, uh, you have the back dial where you can change everything one by one and look through the photos like you're used to, or you have this front dial by your shutter button, and that's what we're changing. So what I do with that locked setting is that I, it will hop between the photos I've protected, right? So if I tag photos as good ones, um, I, I just wanna hop between all them and I can see all of those. Super helpful tip. I use this constantly. Um, it's a really nice way to edit while you shoot, um, which I could probably talk about in a whole another video. Back to the menu. With the rate button function, and that is a button in the top left here, and I'm gonna change it to protect. Um, the reason for this is that the camera, the photo program I use to sort photos, photo mechanic, um, it can sort and ingest by locked photos. And so it's really nice to have them be tagged photos and you can sort by them extremely quickly. Um, but by changing those two settings in here, it's gonna make your editing in the field a lot faster. Uh, I don't do a lot in here. Sometimes I turn on AF point display. These are all playback. So this is all like when you're looking at photos, it'll show like where the autofocus point was or whether or not you have things blown out. I just, you know, I'm just getting an idea of it. I'm not sitting there uh, going over anything crazy. Um, so this is all the Wi-Fi settings. Uh, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna turn this stuff on and off as I need. Um, this is not like, you know, this is kind of you set up case by case. So basically you can go in here and you can tether it to your phone so you can transfer files. Uh, record function card select. I do end up changing a lot of stuff in here. So one thing you can turn on in here is you can change this from disable to enable. And basically what that would do is record your photos to one card and your videos to another. Um, that would be really nice. You have, these are both dual SD card slots in this camera, but this applies to any camera that has this option. Um, record options. I generally leave it in standard, which means it just records to a card until it's full and you go to the other card. Uh, you can have it record to multiple. So if you want to put two cards in there and it'll record backups and, you know, so then you have two copies in case something happens. And then you could also have record separately, which I use a lot. So what that'll do is record raws to one of your cards and JPEGs to the other. Um, you got to go back to that menu at the beginning and change your quality to raw plus JPEG. And what's nice about that is if you're working with an on-site editor or something that's really quick turnaround, um, I can hand them a card of JPEGs and then I keep all my RAWs for myself. Uh, file numbering, 
Continuous is fine. I don't really mess with that at all. File name, I usually change this to something, but you can basically go in here and change user setting. You can set it to you know your initials or maybe you know some kind of code or something like that. Um, I generally just put in like initials or something, um, and like that's you know about as advanced as I get in there. Uh, format cards, format card. That's obvious. Uh, auto rotate. I leave on. Add rotate info. I don't. That's for video files. I guess you could turn that on. This might mess up if you move the camera a lot, though. So, again, who knows? Uh, language, English, or whatever you use. Help text size, small. Beep. I turn this off for everything, because if you actually bump that screen when you're not supposed to make any noise, that is really annoying. Uh, headphone volume, power saving. Um, these I generally kind of leave alone unless I'm setting like a remote camera or something like that. Auto power off, I either disable or I can turn this up when I'm using multiple cameras. Probably just turn it to 10 minutes right now. And that can be really annoying when you set a camera away or kind of lay it over a shoulder and then all of a sudden you need to use it in a hurry and well, it doesn't turn on. Uh, eco mode off. Um, viewfinder display, so this is like an auto switching. Um, I don't 100% understand the difference between these two. Uh, these are very like mirrorless settings. So being that these are my first and second mirrorless cameras or whatever, uh, I don't change it much. But basically you can have it set to only use a screen, only use the viewfinder, or then you can uh, only screen auto one or auto switching. I, I don't I don't know what the difference is between these two. Um, I haven't read up on them, but I've just been leaving it in number one. Um, and I could see using it in like viewfinder only. If I know I'm not going to review for a while, just why not save the battery life? Uh, screen brightness, I haven't touched. Viewfinder brightness, I did turn up the other day on the R5. Again, this is going to be kind of based on your needs. I wish there was more like an auto setting. Um, color tone, I'm never really going to adjust this. Um, viewfinder color tone, you, you could calibrate this, I guess, but I, I mean, you're looking at a video screen through an eyepiece. Uh, I think this is kind of uh, a little bit hokey. Like, I guess if something really bugs you that things look a little yellow in there, I would fix it. But I, I mean, your eyes going to adjust to whatever you're pointing it at pretty quick. So, um, and yeah, so, um, HDMI resolution, I'm not touching any of this. Touch control, uh, that's again, like just basically the sensitivity of that. Multi-function lock, so what this does is when you turn on the lock button, which on the R5 and the R6 is up by the, uh, the video record button, just tells it what dials it locks. Um, so I'm probably gonna have it just lock out. I always turn it on to change the main dial, quick control, I wanted to like lock out all the dials. And, and that's really good when you're setting an exposure and you don't want anything to change. Uh, shutter at shutdown, I had it closed. Sensor cleaning, I always have it do auto cleaning at power off. And of course you can use these to initiate a cleaning at any time. Um, I don't touch like custom shooting modes. Personally, I'm just always flying around changing things all the time, but these are nice if you want to set up a way that you'd like to shoot or if you're Going to change something really quickly. I need to get into this because there is a way to like set dials to do this quickly. Um, but I generally just change my exposure and move on. Um, battery info is just going to show you info about the battery. Um, copyright information. I generally go in here and enter my name and my copyright details on a camera I own. I don't own this camera, so I'm not going to change it. But you can also do this in the Canon software if you plug the camera into the computer. And a lot of times I actually do it that way. Uh, the rest of this is just going to be pretty straightforward uh, in that menu, that is. Uh, in here, I'm going to change um, not much in this first menu. Second menu, this is same exposure for new aperture. It's nice if you use a lot of variable ISO or variable aperture lenses. Um, I use it more for video. So basically, if you have an f4 to a 5.6, like the 100 to 400 I have sitting over here, um, it will change your exposure automatically to match that changing aperture. I don't use a lot of variable uh, aperture lenses, so I don't use this feature a lot. And I use it more for like video. So if I zoom during video, my exposure doesn't go dark or light or something. I'm not going to change any of the aperture range or shutter speed range. Um, you could set it to be, you know, 
uh, basically. So on here, I'm not gonna change uh, much on these first two. Control ring rotation, again, that's if you wanna change the way the control ring on the new RF lenses, which way it goes. Customize buttons, I'm gonna change a lot in here. Um, number one, again, go watch my R5 autofocus video, but I'm gonna change the shutter button to just do the exposure lock. I don't want my shutter button to do any autofocusing. Cord button I'm gonna leave alone. AF on, I'm gonna leave it as metering an AF start. So AF on is set to traditional autofocusing, and then the star button I'm gonna go over and change to eye detection autofocus. So now, like in my R5 video, my AF on button on the back of the camera will do autofocus, and my star button on the back of the camera will do face tracking autofocus. Uh, very thorough video on that, don't need to uh, go into it too much here. Um, the AF point selection, that's again going to be changing our different modes. So this depth of field preview button, I'm going to set it to cropping and aspect ratio. And what that lets me do is by hitting that depth of field preview button on the front of the camera, I can, um, a, I can just basically switch between full frame and crop. Um, it's kind of corny for most uses, but it's nice when you, again, you're shooting those things that are really far away because you can kind of skip, you know, uh, just saving space. Um, I'm not gonna change too much else here. I'm gonna leave set AF point to center. And this last one, multi-controllers, I'm gonna change it to direct AF point selection. And this lets you move your autofocus point around without having to hit any other menus, which is really nice. Um, dials, I am going to change. Um, so in manual mode, I'm gonna change the front dial to auto, uh, aperture. And then the back dial, I'm gonna to change to shutter speed. Uh, and that is because I shoot a lot in aperture priority. And so it's nice to be able to just kind of keep everything the same. Uh, control ring, there's a lot of ways to change this. Um, I, you know, obviously you have to have a new RF lens to use it, uh, but it's really nice is kind of having this set to ISO speed. Um, and that is nice because then basically you hold the shutter button half down and then you, control the ring and you can change your ISO without having to like grab the top dial. Uh, I'm not gonna change much out here. Really shutter without lens, I'm gonna enable because I use some old vintage lenses with the R5 and now R6, which are kind of fun and they are nice to be able to use, but you gotta use that, you gotta turn that on if you um, wanna use those. Um, I'm trying to see. Add IPTC, um, so I guess you have to add an IPTC. I'm gonna do this in photo mechanics, so I'm gonna skip that. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'm hoping to give you a full report on what I think about this little R6, um, but I hope this was helpful. Those are all the settings I changed. Of course I go in and set some custom menus in that green menu, but that's kind of really boring to watch. Um, as far as on the outside of the camera goes, um, I'm not changing a whole lot. I, I generally, like everything's kind of the way it is. On this camera, there's a dial to change between like manual and aperture priority. You lose that top screen. Um, and so obviously I'm not gonna change much there. Um, and yeah, you know, there's, you know, double SDs. So it's pretty cool little camera. I'm, I'm pretty excited to play with it and really excited to share what I think about it and compare it to the R5. And maybe compared to the 1DX Mark III, because it kind of is closer to that than it is to the R5. Or maybe the 1DX Mark III is closer to this. I don't really know. Uh, it's kind of crazy what these cameras can do right now. But anyways, without further ado, I hope that was helpful. I hope it helped you um, understand some of this stuff and uh, get a better grasp of setting up your camera. And um, if you have any other questions or any other menu items you want help with, I think I hit them all. But if I didn't, please leave a comment down below. Of course, as always, go follow me on Instagram. I'm over there at Brett in Real Life. It's a terrible username, but it's the one I'm stuck with. <laughs> and uh, have a great day. And uh, I'm, I might double video it today. So I'm hoping you might have some other videos to watch. So go subscribe and like everything and give me all the clout so I can, you know, drive a Tesla. I'm going to keep making this joke because I don't think anybody watches these videos till the end. Uh, yeah, so comment Tesla if you actually watch this to the end of this. Not that I have anything to give you, but um, it'll make me laugh. So thanks. Have a great day.